So I'm not on TikTok much, but as a doctor of nutrition science, the food and health trends that take off on the platform still manage to catch my eye. So we're gonna look at a few of the trends that stuck out to me the most in 2022, and we'll see how much the evidence behind them actually holds up. Let's science it. So y'all, I'm about to take this. TikTok made me do it. It's a one day detox. And y'all, when I say it smells horrible and it tastes even worse. Okay, the benefits of this says it's energy boosting, poor diet, helps with your body odor, constipation, pain in the stomach and chest. It cleanses the colon, kidneys, lungs, and the liver, as well as burning belly fat and much more. Starting off hot. This super gross trend started catching fire this past spring and summer, and it involves downing a nasty concoction of natural ingredients that'll destroy your bowels. Due to its extreme nature and violent on-screen reactions, it produced a slew of copycats alongside a wave of controversy. TikTok doesn't love many things quite the way it loves poop. Detoxes are not new by any means, but it plays into the long-standing idea of the quick fix. No time for the gym, no budget for a new diet, try this herbal tea and you'll shave that belly fat off in no time. But this raises a few key issues. Yes, weight loss will happen, but it won't last. Those claims about boosting your energy and cleansing your organs are completely unsubstantiated. There's simply no evidence to suggest any truth to this. And what exactly are we detoxing here? Our bodies detox naturally every day. We have specialized organs to detoxify blood, like your liver metabolizing alcohol, your kidneys excreting down broken medications, and your colon getting rid of undigestible solids. So the detox here is not clear on what it's actually ridding your body of. Finally, the notion that natural equals good is a flawed perception. Lots of things that are natural are harmful to us, and in some instances, even lethal. Nothing here will necessarily kill you, but natural in this case means shitting your brains out. Not only is that not a fun way to spend your day, it's not a sustainable behavior for your overall health. Anytime you see the word detox, alarm bell should start ringing in your head. Unless you're penciled in for a colonoscopy, there's no health reason to do a detox like this. The best way to keep your body healthy is to enjoy a diverse diet with lots of fruits and veggies, which are packed with both fiber and fluid, plus plenty of whole grains, beans, and fermented foods. These will keep your bowels moving at a regular pace and support your overall health. That's not what science tastes like, that's what colonoscopy prep tastes like. I'm not exactly sure how to say this. Profi? 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 Anyways, this odd trend involves taking your cup of joe and putting a whole entire protein shake in it. This cocktail exists at the weird intersection of coffee's popularity and the glorification of high protein. So this trend managed to reach a wide demographic fairly quickly. Somewhat surprisingly, the evidence is pretty consistent that coffee itself is healthy for you, even up to pretty high volumes like four to six cups per day, which is great news for me. It's actually the protein part we need to be a little more wary of. While high protein diets are really popular, most promote protein intakes that are way higher than what we actually need. The recommended range is 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. So for a 150 pound person, that's the equivalent to about two cans of tuna. There are some people who may need more, like athletes or your grandma. It's important to note that protein has calories so boosting with lots of protein in your coffee in addition to eating full meals may be more calories than you need. I'd also watch out for added sugars and be skeptical of the alternative sweeteners in those syrups and creamers in those shakes. This trend is not the worst thing in the world or anything, but I tend to support getting most of your protein needs from actual foods and pairing protein with carb-containing meals to help slow down glucose absorption. While not bad for you, there are better ways to integrate protein into your diet. That's what jittery protein tastes like. This, my friends, is what breakfast cereal looks like for me. I call it nature's cereal. This combination, I'm gonna share with you what it does to me specifically. Whenever I eat this cereal in the morning, first thing in the morning, 
It helps with digestion, so any kind of constipation issues. The social media age has been a curse and a blessing for the nutrition world. On one hand, you get the ghost pepper challenge, but on the other hand, it makes spreading healthy and viable food recipes easier than ever. On the odd end of that spectrum, TikTok threw their hat into the ring this year and gave us nature's cereal, a trend that has its feet firmly planted in two worlds, the aesthetic value of food and the desire for healthy quick fixes. Now, everything in nature cereal is good for you. Berries and pomegranates are great sources of fiber and antioxidants. And coconut water is full of electrolytes, perfect for all my runners out there. Now, I personally have concerns with how this all comes together flavor and texture wise, but if you're looking to try it, don't be afraid to mix up the ingredients. Our microbiomes love diversity. I'd also recommend eating this with some nuts or yogurt, as nature's cereal itself lacks the protein and fat your body needs in tandem with the carbs. That's what the garden tastes like. Have you heard of a butterboard? This is what one looks like, and I, I want to make them the next charcuterie board. Not to usurp charcuterie, but like maybe a little bit, but mostly because I just love the concept. It's by Josh McFadden, and it's all about if you're serving a group of people, like spread a bunch of salt and butter on a plate, add tons of blatant salt, tons of lemon zest, any herbs or toppings you want. I'm adding edible flowers and like a honey coriander situation, but I'll link more ideas below. And serve with warm bread, and it just feels like really communal. I love it. Who doesn't love butter? It's a staple of every kitchen you've ever been in, and it's a shortcut for giving your food more flavor. Earlier this year, people decided to cut out the middleman and just spread the butter on a charcuterie board with various seasonings and eat it as is. This trend was bound to get some eyes on it, not just because of the popularity of butter, but also because of its response to the fear of toxic seed oils that ride on the tail feathers of the paleo diet. There's not much health benefit to these. Butter is basically pure saturated fat. Trying to stick below the max intake of 10% of total daily calories as saturated fat allots about three tablespoons of butter, or roughly two swipes of a butter board. If it falls in the special treat category, like every few months at a party, it's probably not gonna matter that much. But I'd watch out for making this a regular part of a dietary pattern, since bread dipped in butter is usually just an appetizer, and a pretty calorie dense one at that. If you whip this out at a party, be prepared for people to give you funny looks. That's what cholesterol tastes like. And it is what I call the hot girl walk. Now obviously there are a lot of health benefits when you go on these walks for a long time and walk kind of quickly, but it's what you do on the hot girl walk that matters. You're only allowed to think about three things on the hot girl walk. One, things you're grateful for. Two, your goals and how you're going to achieve them. And three, how hot you A personal favorite trend of mine, the hot girl walk. Megan the Stallion helped popularize the hot girl mentality among teens and young adults. So an offshoot of it focused on exercise is catered directly towards Gen Z, Gen Z, sorry. Canadian, a generation of people who place heavy importance on self-care and mental health. Walking is super healthy for you, for your body and mind. A study published in Nature shows that aiming for around 8,000 steps per day seems to be the threshold associated with a reduced risk of conditions like high blood pressure, obesity, and depression. While another study found that taking 7,000 or more steps per day is associated with more than half a lower risk of dying over the next 10 years. This trend is great. Not only is it an effective way to exercise and improve your mood, but it can be done year round, whether by yourself, with friends, or with your favorite poodle. Walking is a sustainable activity that you can do for years and will only ever have a positive effect on you. And that is what science tastes like. Thanks for tuning in to Nourishable. If you want to help out the channel in making more evidence-based nutrition science videos, consider supporting us on Patreon. Link in the video description along with all our references cited in this episode. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all things nutrition.